So you want to know almost a decade's worth of line of duty plot in just a few minutes? All right, here goes nothing. Firstly, there's a load of acronyms, but the only one that really matters is AC-12, an anti-corruption unit that polices the police, and which every copper seems to absolutely hate. AC-12's job is to flush out corrupt bobbies and fight blue-on-blue -blue crime, and no, I don't mean double denim. There's Big Dog Superintendent Hastings, who loves mentioning God's mom. Mother of God, Mother of God, Mother of God. There's undercover stealth queen D.S. Kate Fleming, and there's unlikely stud muffin D.S. Steve Arnott, whose solving crime face is irresistible to any woman. In series one, the three musketeers investigate DCI Tony Gates, cause he's suspiciously good at his job. Then Gates gets framed for his mistress's murder by Tommy, who runs an OCG, that's an organized crime group. Did I mention there's a load of acronyms? Tommy's crew like cutting off fingers and using bad language, especially this gobby little rascal on a bike called Ryan. Long story short, Gates realises his career is screwed, so leads AC-12 to Tommy, then jumps in front of a lorry. Turns out that one of his team, a smarmy tall fella named D.S. Cotton, a.k.a. Dot, is working for the baddies, who call him the caddy. And trust me, he's going to make things much harder for AC-12 especially because he ends up joining their team in Series 2, which sees the downfall of D.I. Lindsay Denton, who gets framed for murder when a convoy of police cars is attacked. Everyone dies apart from Denton and a protected witness who turns out to be Tommy the gangster. But then Tommy gets killed anyway by a fake nurse in hospital, who also throws Steve's new squeeze out the window. Anyway, Denton's livid because she was only trying to save this teenager called Carly from the OCG and it all backfired. She goes to the slammer for a bit and gets roughed up. And then, when they let her visit a dying mum, she gets kidnapped by two bent coppers. She's having none of it and fights back like a total legend, but still ends up being convicted of murder. AC-12 get wind of the codename The Caddy, and who do they put in charge of finding him? Only Dot the flipping caddy himself. Nice one. You still with me? All right. In Series 3, Sergeant Danny Waldron shoots a suspect in cold blood. Then someone in Danny's own team ends up shooting him and claiming it was suicide. But Danny's made this list of names of these proper evil blocks in a paedophile ring and the caddy's stolen it. Steve and Kate discover that a retired copper called Fairbank is one of the paedophiles, which is awkward for Hastings because they're both Masons. Then Jailbird Denton gets released and works with Steve to find the list, which is also awkward because they once dry humped. But I didn't shag her. Anyway, Denton sends a copy of the list to AC-12, just seconds before the caddy shoots her in his car, which is actually Steve's car with different reg plates. The caddy frames Steve as the caddy, and his girlfriend leaves him, and this lawyer Jill Bigelow keeps popping up everywhere, and he's making a beeline for Hastings, who's sad about his wife. Then AC-12 realised Dot's the caddy, and he busts his way out the office. Kate goes all Terminator and pursues him, until the OCG try to shoot her. But Dot takes the bullet instead and gives a dying declaration about a rotten stinker in the force whose name begins with H. OK, almost there. Series 4. DCI Ros Huntley is under a ton of pressure to find a serial killer, but forensic nerd Tim Ifield keeps sticking his oar in about insufficient evidence. Huntley goes to his house where he accidentally almost kills her, except she wakes up and kills him instead. In the tussle, he scratches her arm and it goes all gross. Ew, disgusting. She frames him for another murder and even frames her husband who gets Steve thrown down the stairs by this balaclava man. Huntley has her arm amputated. Then she gets arrested. Then AC-12 discover both a solicitor and a boss called Hilton are linked to balaclava man. Then everyone's like, oh, maybe that H person that Caddy mentioned is Hilton. But hang on. Hastings' name begins with H2. Finally, in Series 5, a police convoy is hijacked by the OCG. DS John Corbett, an undercover cop posing as a tough nut criminal, is to blame. H is a senior police officer. Tell me I'm wrong. Corbett's totally obsessed with who the bloody hell this H is, and he's using the gang to lure him out. So all systems go at AC12, where Kate is now a DI. Bye. Steve has a beard and Hastings is in deep doo-doos because it's starting to look like he might be the notorious mastermind H. Gang member Lisa, who seems kinda all right because she cries when people die, figures out Corbett's a rat and gets him murdered by Ryan. 
That gobby kid on a bike from series one. Then Hastings goes rogue and meets up with the OCG to prove his innocence. This scary AC3 unit who were the police that police the police that police the police. Come and investigate Hastings and he gets charged. And there's this incredible moment where Stephen K exposed that lawyer, Jill Bigelow, as being a member of the OCG herself. And everyone's like, what? Then this OCG woman posing as a copper tries to kill her in the bog, but she stuffs it up. Then Steve has a light bulb moment that the letter H in Morse code is dot, 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 which means there's not one H, but four dots, which means there's still one dot to take down, or something like that to be continued, dot, dot, dot. So that's pretty much it, you're up to date. Oh yeah, and that Ryan kid, he's all grown up and training to be a copper himself. Maybe by series 20, he'll be chief constable.